What I know is that you need me every day, all the time, to keep that God-shaped place filled and purring. I can't believe you said that. Well, isn't that the perfect word? <laughs> now you're being silly, and they'll never believe it is truly Jesus Christ I am talking to. And you? Who do you say I am? You are the most wonderful, most charming, kindly, comfy friend I've ever had, and God to boot. I'll receive that as a kiss from my bride. So is there anything else you want to say, Lord? Indeed there is. I have waited all your life for us to be together this way. Blessed is the soul who takes up this invitation sooner than later. You have suffered so much out of ignorance and loneliness. If only we could have been together this way when you were still very little. Yes, Lord, if only. This is why I have brought you as a gift to my precious brides, so they don't have to wait but can enter in now. No more loneliness, no more aloneness in the decisions of life. I'm here at your right hand, by your side, and I will always lead you when you ask it of me. The greatest dangers to this relationship are distraction and busyness. These are the subtle tools Satan uses to slowly and ever so imperceptibly draw you away from me. He's very cautious to do it slowly so that you don't notice what's taking place. It begins with projects such as you are facing right now. Uh-oh, that would be moving an 83-year-old woman who is a hoarder with four tiny barking dogs out of the front house and other things that need to be done here on the property. Yes, you may take this as a warning. However, what you have going for you now that you didn't before was a responsibility to souls who want to grow closer to me. So your motherly nature will put the stops on you before you lose what we have right now. But in the past, this is precisely how he stole you away from me. And I cried, Claire. I cried and I cried because I missed you so. My heart sank and tears welled up in my eyes when he said that. Oh my God and my best friend, I am so deeply sorry. Yes, there is a cost, my brides. Your life will be stripped down to bare necessities and very little pleasures from the outside. This is a price you must be willing to pay. I will convict you of your curiosity and the time you take to indulge it surfing on the internet while I am at your side waiting. I will convict you of vanity staying in front of the mirror or shopping for preparations to make you look better. I will convict you of time at a salon and even eating lunch out with a friend that has no bearing on spiritual growth for either one of you. I will convict you of spending too much time in the kitchen, the garden, and compulsive cleaning. Wow, the Lord just <laughs> ran down all of my vices right there, the things that i would been struggling with. He's talking about me. This is your guide. If you have peace and joy in what you do, that is not directly related to me, then you will know I am with you in that activity. But if you feel a nagging, a tugging by your side, like, I know I shouldn't be doing this, but, then I am by your side, my bride, lonely for your company. And if you continue to put me off, I will cry. You won't see my tears but you'll feel something terribly wrong inside. That terribly wrong is the sadness and grief of your God deep down in your heart. You see, I am not an easy catch, and I'm high maintenance. So if you really mean it when you say, I want that kind of relationship with Jesus, then you will have to undergo many sacrifices and streamline your time to be with me. 
tell them, Claire, some of the things that you've done. Um, well, for instance, my basic day is picking up food for the food bank and perhaps a short trip to the store, picking up prescriptions, going to the doctor, taking the dogs and cats for a good long walk out in the pasture behind our house. Um, dinner, dishes, and basic everyday cleaning. Spending time with my husband during a meal or sharing spiritual things. All of that adds up to about four hours of maintenance. Then in the evenings, maybe four to six hours of correspondence with all of you, which I didn't do tonight, by the way, um, because I wanted to get into the message right away. Good thing I did. Um correspondence with you, our helpers, and then worship, and listening for the message, recording it, uh, editing it, putting it up, which is another four to five hours or so. And in between this, I need two naps about 45 minutes long to rest my body because I have fibromyalgia. But with the rapture looming, I've cut out anything like repairing clothing or, or shopping at the thrift store or watching a movie with my husband, or exercise, cooking my favorite foods. I love to bake. <laughs> the Lord continued, So your life has changed considerably in the last few months. Oh yes, Lord, thank you. I'm very happy with the schedule. There have been sacrifices, but none of them can compare to being with you, sweet Jesus. And so you see, my dear brides, there is much you will have to sacrifice if you've not already streamlined your lives. And I am giving this instruction not just for you, but for those left behind, so they will know what this kind of relationship takes. You will never, for one minute, regret leaving these things behind. That is so true. But as Claire stated earlier, and as I warned her, a big, time-consuming project is the perfect time for Satan to use his strategies of distraction to slowly suck the life right out of you by sliding away from me due to increased activity. 